Thank you, Stan, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Rosemary, I already explained that to you, that by the town council told us that we had, the only thing that we could do as the two of us was determine how the voting would go. We, could, we did not have to do that as far as certain other things. We could not do that unless we had a full committee's time. And we were out of time. Carl was away. We didn't have the time to do that. Today is day 30. So we had to do what we had to do. I okay. Well, we could have had it before, but Steve couldn't make it. So same thing. Okay, that's it. We're okay, we're, we're not having this conversation any longer. I'd like to I'd like a moment of silence, please. This meeting's being recorded and televised by the WHCA. It's a joint meeting with the four Whitman, uh, Whitman members of the WHRSD school committee to interview um, a number of candidates, a large number of candidates for the purpose of filling two vacancies on the school committee. And uh, if we can invite the first candidate in, it would be great. So Heather is number two, so we'll see if she makes it Pardon? in yeah. time. Yeah, because I know she wasn't out there. Everyone, this is Stephanie Blackman. Hey, how are you? Oh, Stephanie. Hey. You've, been, you, you've been told the, the rules of the, of the evening, I guess, right? I, I Sort of, yes. I've been told not to repeat my resume and to tell we've, why we've I'm had, yeah, we've had your an awesome person. <laughs> all are familiar with the resume. If you could make a presentation that uh, lasts no more than 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Be happy to do that. All right. It's great to see a Massasoit person here, but that's, uh, that's beside the point. Well, you know, uh, absolutely, Carl. You know, when I knew it was you that I'd get to occasionally work with, I thought it was a good idea. All right. So, uh, residents of Whitman, honorable members of the school committee and select board, my name is Stephanie Blackman. I'm here before you as a parent, an educator, and an involved member of the community. I grew up in Hanson, and I've lived in Whitman since 1999. Um, my focus has always been on helping others and on education. And whether this has been my role as a substitute teacher and special education tutor for Whitman Hanson when I first got out of college, as an uh, English and special education teacher at the middle school and high school levels in Weymouth, or in my role as a professor at Massasoit Community College, as a realtor for over 20 years, or as a small business owner who assists people with getting their books ready to publish. I've had many different roles, and this doesn't even include my volunteer work with um, School Improvement Committee at Duval, back when Mrs. Hoke was around, um, with um, PTO, with my church, um, and with the Whitman Hanson Youth Soccer. So I know what this community looks like, what it has to offer, and how we can work together to make things better. I take great pride in letting people know where I live. My friends often joke that I try to move everyone to Whitman because I think it is one of the best towns with so much to offer. I tell them it's like Mayberry. You walk down the street, people actually say hi to you. It's nice. Um, I brag about the school system, the extracurricular activities, the advanced placement programs, the beautiful park in downtown. And while I see all the wonderful opportunities here and in Hanson, I also see places where we can make things better for our students, for our faculty, and for our staff, and for our residents. Those of you on the committee have read my resume and my letter of intent. My background and skill set are unique, and this will allow me to offer different perspectives and ideas. Um, 
For instance, just this past weekend, buyers who loved a house here in town, um, quote, according to their realtor, researched the schools, the town budget, and the diversity, and apparently that raised some concerns. And as a result, they decided not to make an offer on this house. That's something that isn't good for any of us. So we need to find ways that we can improve things and make them better. But I'm not here as a realtor. First and foremost, I'm a parent of two young men. My oldest graduated in 2021. In his time at Whitman Hanson, he took 13 AP classes, participated in soccer every fall, winter track and field, and spring track and field all four years of high school. He received the Dennis O'Brien Scholarship, which was incredible. Um, my youngest, on the other hand, has dealt with anxiety, which led to missing a large amount of school during both his sophomore and junior years. I'm extremely grateful for the kindness and compassion of Mrs. Kerrigan, Ms. Duxevich, Dr. Jones, Mr. Flack, and other members of the faculty who have worked with us to ensure that Nicholas can have the opportunity to be successful in this his senior year. Just as I've advocated for my own children, I believe that all children deserve someone who will support them in meeting their needs. We are fortunate in that our school system goes above and beyond for most students. There are areas where communication can be improved, clarification can take place, and efficiency can be further intertwined with the process of how we work. I have two specific examples of how I've been able to contribute to our community. First, at St. Joseph the Worker Church, I took on the role of running the annual craft fair, and under my hand, I grew the fair to double the size, and I was able to streamline the event. This resulted in an enormous increase in our profits, which we were able to then use to provide ni very nice meals at Mainspring House in Brockton. My second example is in my role at Women Hanson Youth Soccer. Women Youth Soccer was very strong and well-run for nearly 40 years before I took a seat on the board, so I can't take credit for that. But what I can't take credit for is when I assumed the role of vice president, which has a large fundraising component, I increased our, our fundraising from approximately $3,000 a year to $15,000. I was also able to help enhance meetings by ensuring that an agenda was published with adequate time before meetings and available to all of the coaches and families of the participants so they knew whether there was some issue they wanted to weigh in on. Additionally, I served as coordinator for the annual spring banquet, and I scheduled food trucks and appearances by Revolution players and activities for attendees. But what I'm most proud of is that... Um, when I joined, it was Whitman Youth Soccer, and Hanson Youth Soccer was separate. And I advocated for the two to be joined, and I worked very hard with some other wonderful members of the committee, and we have, are now Whitman Hanson Youth Soccer. It is a much stronger program because we are stronger together. And um, I also helped develop the bylaws and policies and procedures and all of that that has been set in place. Um, I believe that I can bring some of these same skills to Whitman Hanson Regional School District School Committee. I'm not a person who plays politics. I'm someone who advocates for what is right, for what is logical, and for what is fair. I strongly believe and teach my students that it is important to know all sides of an argument. Research is extremely important, as is taking the time to weigh options. For instance, when the new Whitman Middle School was proposed, I attended meetings that were open to the public in order to learn about why a new school was needed. Both of my boys had attended the old school, and they had few complaints. But in learning about the repairs and needed improvements to keep the school in compliance legally, it was obvious that a new building made much more sense financially than repairing or patching the old building. And when I attended those meetings, I spoke fervently about the need for the soccer fields to not be forgotten. Because we have limited space in our towns, and we have many sports that are offered, which is fabulous. So I wanted to make sure that multi-use fields that are jointly used for soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, and football, amongst other activities and community events, were not forgotten. I also advocated for the inclusion of an auditorium, which will not only allow our students to proudly display their skills in the arts, but it should also provide a revenue stream for us when we can rent it out. I like that idea of bringing money to the program. 
<laughs> There's so much that we need to consider when looking at our students. They need to feel included. They need to feel like they have an opportunity to try new things. They need to feel like they have a voice. I want to be someone who people can come to with their concerns, and I want to try to help alleviate those. For instance, one area of weakness that many of us at Massasoit Community College have seen in incoming students is their lack of critical thinking skills. Unfortunately, the MCAS has constrained teachers and has, in many cases, dominated how our students learn. As a result, I was approached at Massasoit by the Dean of Humanities, who had been asked by the Science Department to create a STEM-themed English composition path. As somebody who believes that education should be relevant and that students will be more successful if they understand the reasoning behind what they're being taught, which should always be more than because they're going to have a test, I created an English Composition 1 course and an English Composition 2 course, which are STEM-themed and which allow students to explore relevant topics in our world, such as gene editing, while still learning how to use proper punctuation, follow instructions for formatting, and heighten their reading, written and verbal communication skills. While this program is still in its infancy, we are only a couple of years in, last year I was approached to develop a business-themed composition course. And I worked with a faculty member from the business department in order to create a paired curriculum so that students can learn about developing a business plan, about financial literacy, and again, about how to communicate effectively with others in the work environment and with the public. We are looking forward to having this course available in the future. It is, you have about one minute. Though. All right. Perfect. It is imperative that our school district ensure that students have all of the tools we can provide for them to be able to pursue their goals. And as adults, we know that for our youth, often those goals are not visible or they change as people mature. So our students need to have the best possible education that we can provide. I thank you for your time and hope that you will strongly consider me for one of the two open seats on the school committee. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much, Stephanie. Thank, thank you, you very much. You too. Thank you. Good job. Right on the nose at 10 minutes, too, Stephanie. I worked really hard at it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Now, Heather wasn't there earlier, so we'll see if she has arrived. We'll just fit, we'll just fit her in if she shows up late. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there could be reasons that are important. She didn't report to speak to me. Yeah, she did. I'm surprised. Okay. All right. So, so Heather has not shown up yet. So we're going to the next. So everyone, this is Chris Diorio. Hi. <laughs> Should I just start? Or? You may start. Thank you, you very much. Uh, thank you very much for entertaining my application. Um, most of you, I think, know who I am, and you have my resume in front of you. Um, but just a few things to highlight from the resume. I've been practicing as a trial attorney uh, for 32 years now. Uh, my practice centers around criminal law, civil rights, and uh, divorce and domestic relations practice. Uh, I have two kids right now in uh, the, the Whitman schools. Uh, Peter is eight. Amelia is five. Amelia loves kindergarten. Um, along with my law practice, I've been teaching for the past 12 years as well, uh, teaching civil rights and constitutional law from college all the way down to fourth grade. Uh, I've had the opportunity to teach at the, the Milton Academy's Saturday course extension program uh, for the last 12 years, and it's given me a, a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to meet with and be able to see what kids are doing at, at, at an age that sort of passed me by uh, in terms of, of education and, and seeing what they're doing now and seeing how kids are growing through the system. More to the point um, for today, what is it that I bring to a school committee uh, if I'm selected? Again, as a, a person who's been trying cases as a litigator for 30 plus years, uh, I've learned a lot of things. And one of those things is, is when to ask the next question. There are a lot of questions that need to be asked um, when budgets come up, when certain issues come up before the school committee. Um, I've learned when to ask questions, and, and I've also learned not to take the first answer uh, on its face, that there's always uh, something else that needs to be addressed, something else that needs to be looked into, and that's something that I, I bring uh, as uh, a seasoned litigator. Um, I am, as some folks are aware, uh, an outsider. I'm reminded of it.
constantly. Um, I was not born here. Uh, I've been living here in town for about 13 years now. Um, but I chose to be here. I chose this community. I chose to be here to practice my profession. I chose to build my family here. I chose to raise my kids here. And as somebody who is investing in this community, somebody who is here with my kids, it means that I want to make their educational and life experience here in the community something that they can grow in the best that it can possibly be. And that brings me to my third point. Um, I am uh, unique in that I have never been educated in a public school. I have been uh, educated in religious schools uh, from kindergarten all the way through law school. Boston College is considered a Jesuit institution, so I've, I have never been taught in a public school. And as a result, um, I, I, I admit to a bit of a bias uh, for a long time in thinking that private education was the better path. Uh, I never thought that my kids would attend public schools. Um, I lived with that internal bias for a long time. And then I met public school teachers. And I met public school administrators. And I met paraprofessionals in public schools. And through meeting them here in this community and elsewhere in, in my travels, I've, I've lived in Quincy and Weymouth and North Attleboro and, and met, you know, other locations in Massachusetts. But when I meet these public school teachers and I see how much they care about their profession, how hard they work, how much they struggle on a daily basis to do a tremendously hard job, how much they struggle and give of themselves in their own lives to take care of their kids. Not the kids at home, their kids. If you talk to public school teachers, when they're sitting in their classroom, these are their kids and they treat them that way. And in seeing how they did this, it changed my mind about public education. It made me want to be involved. It made me want to do everything that I possibly could to support public education. Public education is our greatest pathway to opportunity in America. It's a necessity. We need to do more things to allow our community to invest in and strengthen these public schools. We need to do a better job in what I propose to do as a school committee member. We need to do a better job at working with and listening to our teachers. They're the ones on the ground. They're the ones with boots on the ground every day dealing with students and dealing with the problems of teaching and educating these kids. I want to make sure that we're listening to our, not just our teachers, but our paraprofessionals and our staff members as well. They're the ones that are taking care of our kids. They know best what they need to succeed in their jobs, and they know what they need best to help our kids succeed going forward. I would want to have regular meetings with teachers and staff members at all levels on a regular basis to ask them point blank, what do you need? What is it that you need from us as a school committee? What do you need to get from the town to do your job, not just at a bare bones level, but to do your job at an effective and successful level to advance these kids to a point where they can succeed in a competitive market? We need to do more to expand our reach and our grasp. And I think that what I mean when I'm talking about that is we have to make sure that students that have special and different abilities and special and different needs are not seen as a burden. Far too often people look at students that are special whatever, you, whether it's special diverse, special uh, in terms of their educational needs, um, they're looked at, at, well, our money is going that way. If you look at Brockton next door, you know, well, where where'd all that 18 million go to? Oh, well, we had to spend all this money on special needs. All these special, you know, these kids that we had to send to other places. Vilifying these kids is a horrible thing for them and for their parents that they're already, you know, seen in a certain way by kids who don't understand, by parents who just don't want to understand. We need to do something to help them more. We need to do more on a regular basis to, to bring these kids inside the circle. 
They're not something to blame when we're wondering why our budgets are increasing every year and why it costs so much to send people out of the district. We have to do more to make them part of the Whitman Hanson School family. That's a huge thing that we need to do, and I would want to do that as a committee member. We need to recognize at a base level that we on the school committee are caretakers of the community's tax dollars. Um, it's not just the select board. It's not just the other boards in town. You know, greater lion's share of the money in our town budget goes to education. We need to recognize that as a school committee. We need to work harder to make sure that we're squeezing every available dollar that is coming from the state, from federal programs. We need to do better at you know, working through Chapter 7. We need to do all of those things to get, squeeze every possible dollar we can to make sure that we can maintain the programs that we already have. Some of these programs that are working tremendously are likely to disappear, not because of our budget, but because they're funded by grants. And all of a sudden, the grants are going to disappear, and these working programs that are benefiting kids will go away. What do we do? We need to do better at planning for these things. We're, we need to make sure that we're maintaining these programs that, that are at risk. And I think, frankly, we need to do a better job at resurrecting disciplines that have gone by the wayside. We need to keep funding the arts. We need to keep funding language programs. We are, for want of a better term, we're living in a global era. And we cannot expect that the dollar is going to help us be understood around the world. Our students need to be understood in dealing with people that are different than them and speak a different language. We need to make sure that we're doing better for them. It is paramount that we need to tend to this essential circle that everybody in our community and every community seems to find itself in. The community is changing Wait, on a one regular minute, Chris. Pardon? One minute. Thank you. Our community is changing. We need to recognize that we're building houses, we have more people coming into this community, and we need to make sure that this community stays a place that our kids who are growing up here that they want to come back to, and that young families, when they're looking around for places to live, if they're trying to make a decision between this community and another, they're going to look at our schools. And if our schools aren't doing the job, and if they're not up to it, we lose those families, we lose those tax dollars, and our community suffers as a result. I'm thankful that you allowed me to stand here and, and sit here and speak with you. Education is necessarily progressive. Our schools cannot remain stagnant if we truly want our students to be able to compete out there in this country and around the world in a global marketplace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Yes, yeah, the end, the, I don't think the person's here yet. That's why they brought him up. She has yeah, a yeah. child. Yeah. 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 There's plenty of reasons. Hello. Hi. Hey. And this is Nicholas Femia. Yes. Did I say that right? Is it Femia. Femia. Thank you. So I just want to start off by extending my condolences to the uh, family and friends of Mr. Fred Small, uh, whose seat we're filling tonight after his passing. Uh, Mr. Small was a beloved member of our community and demonstrated his love for the school district and all that he did. He was a fierce advocate for the children of our community and will be greatly missed by all of us. I'd also like to thank all the members of the select board and women members of the school committee for being here to carry out this important process. Uh, before I talk about uh, what I'd like to do for the Women Hanson School Committee, I just want to tell the public a little bit about myself or those watching who may not know me. Uh, my name is Nicholas Femia. Uh, I've lived in Whitman for most of my life, uh, since I was about three years old. And I went through the Whitman Hanson Regional School District from kindergarten through 12th grade. I graduated second in my class in 2020 during the midst of the pandemic. And I attended Tufts University, where I graduated this past spring summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. I'm a prospective applicant to medical schools this coming spring. And I saw this application opportunity for these vacancies. Um, and besides filling my time with clinical work, I'd be humbled to be able to give back to my community in capacity of, as school committee member. The school district has done so much for me, from guiding me through the college admissions process, to providing me with lifelong friends, and introducing me to me the mentors that I needed to realize what I wanted to do with my life. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. 
As someone who recently navigated the school system, I believe that I can bring a unique perspective to the committee that will be lacking, um, or that is lacking now with the departure of Mr. David Forth. Um, if elected, I will leave national, divisive national politics out of my consideration of any items that I will be voting on. It is my personal belief that national partisan issues have no place in a local, in a local school committee race, and it is a disservice to the children of the community um, that, this com that the committee serves to um, bring those issues um, to the forefront. Um, I will not under any circumstances support any cuts to the Whitman Hanson school budget or any changes to the method used to the um, assessment method between the two towns. Um, I believe that um, the statutory method, which I know the committee switched to in recent years, is the best way to um, assess the budget. Um, I think it's the most fair to use the property values between the two towns to kind of um, assess that instead of the proportional method. I know that the state has kind of advocated for that, and I think that we should we should stick with that if possible. Um, and in terms of um, the budget itself, I think we should always be striving to increase the services provided to our students to keep up with the demands of changing times and not to cut any of those services that we provide. And this is important to me personally, um, who has two younger siblings that are still in the, in the school system right now. Um, I also believe it's important for me to articulate my position on uh, question two that will be on the ballot um, this coming November, just as someone uh, running to fill a seat, I think it's important that I kind of voice my, my personal position on that. Um, so I, I don't believe that standardized testing is the best way to measure student success. Um, I think that, if anything, the pandemic may have actually revealed its flaws. Um, and so I would support, um, I would be a yes on that, on that question. Um, I believe that comprehensive testing that's core specific that assesses children's milestones, um, such I know there's recently implemented diagnostic testing that's kind of done throughout the schools, which is something that we didn't really have when I was going through the system, could be used instead. Uh, and then the results of those with targeted extra help could be used to address the learning gaps that the pandemic has kind of um, caused for some students. Um, I think that grades and performance in class should be the primary metric used to assess student performance to children in school to learn, and it can demonstrate their mastery of course material um, through class and their grades, and I would advocate such a position if elected to school committee. Um, also in regards to this, I've also heard from many students that um, when they're taking the MCAS, they're not able um, to answer a lot of the questions because it's there actually things that they have not actually learned that are on the test. Um, and I don't think, and I think that's kind of revealed a flaw in just that kind of system itself. Um, and teaching to the test kind of takes away from the curriculum and valuable interactions between teachers and students that um, would be, in my opinion, much more, much more important. Um, and as you know, um, or most, as many of you might know, um, rates of depression and anxiety have kind of been skyrocketing among um, adolescents and youth lately. Um, so something that I, this is something that I would want to help address if elected to the school committee. Um, a recent study released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in um, August found that although rates of children reporting symptoms of depression have decreased since the height of the pandemic, they're still higher than they were um, before the pandemic. Um, I know the pandemic and, and kind of national political upheaval has caused a lot of distress for a lot of um, students. Um, and so I think that something we could do to address that was to form some sort of, would be to form some sort of commission kind of made up of community members, maybe school committee members, teachers, parents, and students, just to kind of hear what um, people are going through um, and what we can do um, as a school, as a school committee, and uh, just as a, a town and community, women in Hanson, um, to kind of address this. Because the, the CDC study really kind of stressed the importance of the schools in kind of providing support and help to um, and students, and they believe that it, many communities are kind of lacking that support, and I think that that's something we could look into to make sure we're kind of um, adequately addressing uh, um, that issue. Um, and if elected, I will uh, welcome input from teachers, students, and their parents on any issues affecting the school system, uh, since they are ultimately the ones on whom uh, the committee's decisions will have the greatest impact, um, and I would relay such concerns and ideas to the um, committee as a whole. Um, and I would just like to thank you again for your time tonight. And I'm truly, truly honored to um, have been considered for this position. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much, Nicholas. And good luck in your future, no yeah. matter what it is. You're a young man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Medical. Medical school. And I think you might have bedside manner. <laughs> lacking in so many. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Okay, this should be Anna.
Hi. Everyone, this is Anna Horahan. Yes. yes, Anna. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Um, I really appreciate you all inviting me to come and share with you why I want to be on the school committee for the Whitman Hanson School District. And I would love to share with you a little bit about my background. So I live in Whitman with my husband, Brian, and my children, Everly and Grayson, and my mother, Muriel. And my own children have the pleasure of attending Conley Elementary School. Um, buying our home as first-time home buyers in this community has been such a joy. And I've loved getting to know the community and um, the people who live in this town, building community with other families. Um, I have a little group of friends, we call them ourselves the mom squad, and getting involved in local politics and the school pack has just been a wonderful experience for our family. And Brian and I could not be more grateful that our children attend Conley Elementary School. It's such a special place. So we feel very lucky to be, to be here. Um, let me share a little bit more about my educational and career background. So I received my degree in elementary education from Boston University School of Education, and this afforded me the opportunity to learn about and develop my own sense of pedagogy in education. And I taught in many different types of communities from Brookline to Chelsea, and I even had the opportunity to student teach in London, England. So I have a, a wide background in different kinds of communities and the needs of different families across across Massachusetts and the world. <laughs> um, after receiving my degree, I spent 12 years as a teacher in an early childhood program at BU, and I was also an administrator for four years there. Um, following the birth of my second baby, I launched my own small business. I'm a postpartum doula, so that means that I support families after they've had their babies, learning to you know, transition into this crazy life of parenthood. <laughs> um, so throughout my professional and personal life, supporting families and their children is central to who I am and everything that I do. Um, through my educational uh, work and personal experiences, I've developed some core principles that will guide me while serving on the school committee. So one is that education is an important civil service for democracy. For democracy to function well, we need our voters to be well-educated to be able to make informed decisions at the ballot box. And for our economy to thrive, we need workers who have the skills and knowledge to work and participate in local economies. Public education is absolutely necessary to our democracy and it fuels our economy. And therefore, all decisions I make as a part of this committee will be made through the lens that public education is crucial and does not ultimately detract from our resources, but instead adds to them. Another important idea that I've carried with me through all of my leadership positions is that leaders are meant to lead as a service to the people they represent and support. This will guide my actions and decisions in all things, as I will think not only what matches my own thinking, but what is most in service to the people, especially the children in our towns. This also means that I will at all times be eager to collaborate with fellow committee members, to hear the voices of the leaders in the town, and to be a part of fostering a culture of collaboration and respect between us while maintaining a strong voice of my own. As of course you all know very well, the school committee performs important functions for our community's regional school district. The school committee develops with the recommendations of the superintendent and leadership staff within the school district, educational goals and policies to provide and maintain a high quality education for all students in both of our towns. As a parent with children currently attending school in Whitman, I have firsthand daily experience of life and education in the schools. And I think that this is really important for people on the school committee to have that firsthand experience of the real life impact of the decisions that we're making every day. As an educator, administrator, and a postpartum doula, my career has been devoted to supporting families. My background in education and my teaching and administration experience gives me firsthand knowledge of educational programs and policies, and I will be able to provide educated context and ideas to the various conversations that we will have over time. Again, as you know very well, the school committee also reviews and approves the budget for public education. As a parent, homeowner, and small business owner living in a multi-generational home in one of the most expensive states in the US, I am keenly aware of the personal financial aspect of the decisions made at tables like these. As an educator and administrator, I'm also aware of the funds required to provide even a minimally adequate, adequate education. As I previ previously mentioned, 
I believe that public education is vital to thriving communities. I also believe that passing the buck, so to speak, on funding necessary projects and educational initiatives costs our taxpayers more money in the long run. I believe it is imperative that we fund our schools in ways that support community growth. And I look forward to being a part of looking for creative solutions, such as grant funding and state dollars, to support initiatives, to support important educational initiatives. I would also like to be a part of developing ways to keep the constituents well informed on the costs and benefits of public education programs and to support transparency and agency within the town by communicating openly with community members and our school boards. I believe that the children in the towns of Whitman and Hanson deserve the best that our resources can offer them. And I love families in our town and I love our community. I also know that elected officials have a heavy responsibility to balance an excellent and comprehensive vision for growth while staying grounded in the very real understanding that resourcing for a visionary future comes from our pockets as well as those of our friends and neighbors, young families and seniors alike. My hope overall is that the school committee and select board will choose candidates who have children attending schools in our community and who have a pro-education mindset. You have some excellent candidates here today, and I, like you guys, was very impressed to see how many people were interested in participating in this process. Um, and I would be honored to be selected to represent our town on the school committee. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I really well, thank appreciate you very it. Much, thank, you. thank you. So nice to meet you. Too. Yes. I know. Speak Heather isn't, isn't here. He thought that was Heather. Oh. I mean, no. We were, but she isn't here. So. Everyone, this is Christopher Marks. Correct. Hello. Good evening. I'm okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Thank, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I just jump right in? Yes, you may. All right. Um, my name is Chris Marks. Uh, I'm a 16-year resident of the town of Whitman. Uh, it's my sincere hope that when we're done with this process tonight, you'll honor me with your vote to fill one of the two vacancies on the Whitman Hanson Regional School Committee. My wife, Brianne, and I moved to Whitman in June of 2008 on the day before our wedding. When we first moved here as newlyweds, our primary reasons were financial, and logistical. We were living in my mother-in-law's rented home uh, in Quincy, and we didn't want to start our married life living in her, in her attic. Uh, Whitman was inexpensive, had property available, and was relatively close to both our families, hers in Quincy, mine in Weymouth. We learned very quickly that there was much more to the town than its proximity to our family and its affordability. We loved the small town charm of events like Winterfest, of seeing familiar faces at the supermarket, of literally having a four-way blinking stop sign intersection in the middle of the town. What may once have been a temporary stop on the way to quote unquote, bigger and better things, was really starting to feel like home for us. 16 plus years, three kids, and a new house later, we're still digging in, so to speak. Um, I've been a registered leader with the Whitman Cub Scout PAC 22 since 2015 and the Cub Master since 2020, as well as an Eagle Scout myself for the past 25 years. I've had the opportunity to meet and work with some truly amazing kids uh, and their families and get to know these kids and their families. Um, so my interest in the future of this town goes far beyond the walls of my own home and our roots have grown deep. Our three sons, Lucas, Zachary, and Tyler, have grown up in this town, its schools, and its extracurricular activities. Like all parents, we want what's best for them now and in the future. As of this year, each one attends a different school in this district, which I believe gives me a very unique perspective on the district, district as a whole, allowing me to experience it all at once. To this point, our experience with Whitman schools so far has been great. My kids have had some amazing teachers who have challenged them uh, and really brought out the best in them. The schools have put on wonderful events, not just for the students, but for their families as well. My kids speak of events like the Connolly Polar Express Reading Night, 
Going Buggy and the Brain Show as can't miss highlights of their seasonal social calendar. As a scout leader, we have every year had to cancel our den meetings on the night of the high school's annual science night because nobody shows up at our den meetings. Um, as a leader and a father, I see these events for the formative building blocks of my kids' future and the core memories that they are. I want to see these traditions continue and grow and expand for new generations of students. When I'm not trying to convince town officials to vote for me, I manage the day-to-day -day operations for Premier Energy Solutions, a local emergency power and HVAC solutions contractor. I manage service staff, collaborate with creating and managing operational budgets for expense and revenue projections, develop and track key performance indicators, and help build standard operating procedures and systems to track everything we do. I've been doing this type of work for almost 20 years, mostly in the trade services industry. In my career, I've learned that to be successful, you have to listen more than you speak, especially when you're first getting started. To make a plan, but be willing to admit when it isn't working. To be willing to communicate directly, honestly, and respectfully. To welcome feedback, positive or otherwise. I believe these concepts apply to the positions here, and I'm ready for the challenge. My own values align very much with the district's stated core values. I want every child in Whitman and Hanson to grow up to be confident, productive members of our community who look back on their time in the halls of Whitman and Hanson schools with pride and fond memories. I believe that the best way to ensure that is to make sure they have access to a robust education in schools that are clean, welcoming, and safe to ensure that those schools have access to the resources that they need and the best teachers and staff who truly love what they do. Teachers who can provide a diverse educational platform that exposes them to concepts they don't see every day, to meet them where they are and yet still challenge the way they think. The stated mission of the Whitman Hanson Regional School District is to provide each student with a high quality education that promotes student success and responsible citizenship. It's easy to wish for all of that from the sidelines and hope that it happens, to complain when other people make decisions I disagree with, but ultimately not add anything to the conversation myself. Or I can choose to step up and invest my time and energy to help the hardworking men and women of our school committee help make it happen. After 16 years of benefiting from all the wonderful things this town and these schools have to offer, I find myself called to give back however I can. I probably won't be the most experienced consider, candidate you consider, but I do care deeply about the kids in this town. Both vacancies on the committee leave big shoes to fill. I promise to put in the work, dedicate myself to the cause, and do everything I can to ensure the educational success of this town, to help fight for every resource, big or small, to help make sure our students have what they need to thrive to listen to district parents and make sure their, their concerns are seen, heard, and resolved, to be a model for other towns to look up to and emulate. I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and make the case for why I want to be a part of the school committee. I thank you all for your time, and I look forward to working with you all in the future. Thank you very much, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, I just ran out of water. This also, but I appreciate that. I don't drink soda. Hey, Kathy's coming with you tonight. <laughs> I just can't run out of water. Skinny the same. Yes, please. I thought two would be enough. God bless you. You're welcome. Hello. This is Anne Marie. Yes, Anne Marie Odo. Okay. Welcome, and you may begin when you are ready and you're comfortable. Thank you. Um, so, good evening. My name is Anne Marie Odo, and I'm really thankful and appreciative that I have the opportunity to. I did write stand, but I'm sitting, sit in front of you tonight um, and speak about values and experiences that I can bring if selected to fill one of the two vacancies. 
Um, as a school committee member, I know you're faced with a multitude of issues, concerns, such as policy development, system-wide goals, community relationships, um, budget review and approvals, obviously the health and safety of the children, the teachers, and the staff, um, curriculum approval, collective bargaining, and so much more. Uh, this, you know, these concerns tie into the school committee members' main responsibilities, which, you know, obviously finance and staffing and policy. And being a member of this committee, you know, I, you don't take it, it's not for the faint of heart, you don't take it lightly. Um, it's, it's not for someone that doesn't embrace challenges. Um, I love challenges. Uh, as, as I get a, go along, I'll let you know that I, I like to go to school continuously um, and get degrees, I guess. <laughs> um, so, you know, to be an effective member of a committee, of this committee, you need to be well-versed in communications. Um, you need to display strong leadership skills, professionalism, um, as well as the ability to collaborate with other members uh, the superintendent, staff, and the community harmoniously and productively. And, you know, you need to be transparent and honest and willing to go the extra mile and put in the time. I uh, also want to ensure that we can create, you know, realistic timelines and goals and initiatives with considering the changes um, and differences in opinions uh, of other people, too, and being able to, to listen to that. I think that's a very important um, item. So through my education, life experiences, and curiosity, uh, I bring a lot of value in the areas of mental health, education, specifically special education, um, and technology. Um, I'm a secret nerd. I like technology. <laughs> uh, so first I hold a bachelor's degree in psychology, um, and then I have a master's degree in education. And I just am finishing up. I just have to do my capstone now in um, information security with a cybersecurity focus. Um, and I work in sales. And I'm very successful in utilizing my leadership, communication, organization, compliance, and collaboration with internal and external colleagues. Very versed in that. Um, I work with you know other colleagues, my partners, or uh, outside vendors as well. And I've worked with C levels all the way down to a day-to-day -day, uh, receptionist because uh, you know they're all just as important. And I actually have really good active listening skills, which is uh, something that's. <laughs> Hard to get, um, especially when you have ADHD and um, or, you know, you got a lot going on. And so I've been able to create policies and procedures. Um, I'm very organized, well-written, and um, I love to build strong relationships with the teams and those who I work with because I think that's, like, first and foremost, making sure that you can have a relationship and relate um, with everybody that you're working with. And as a school committee member, it's a responsibility of those who serve to be sensitive to the diverse needs of all the students and be an advocate for all learners and putting the public education before all citizens. Um, key areas that I think would be successful and that I'd be able to embrace would be uh, my strong communications, collaboration, and understanding the importance of compliance with current policies. All these skills I do, um, I have and exemplify. So schools across the country are definitely overwhelmed with the surge of mental health. Um, the high school is definitely an area that, you know, had a very sad, uh, tragic accident uh, a few years ago. Um, these health problems cause challenges for educa educators, and the poor mental health can interfere with students' ability for them to learn, uh, where they can also have um, effect on their behavior, school engagement, peer relationships, and um, through these areas where I have both education and experience, I feel like I could be um, a, a good advocate. Uh, I have a bachelor's in psychology, and then I also have um, a master's in uh, education where I've learned a lot of things about special ed and, and stuff like that and being able to handle that. I was also a previous member for um, uh, Dove, which is a domestic violence nonprofit organization that's uh, located in Quincy. And through that, I learned the importance of education and awareness of uh, domestic violence and also uh, effectively collaborating with all the other board members and, and listening to other people's opinions, which I think is very important. Um, although I do not teach, I do hold a Massachusetts teacher's license. Um, in 2013, they weren't hiring teachers, so I went into sales. Um, and so through my education, it has definitely prepared me to advocate for my children and collaborate, collaborate diligently with the special educators on IEPs, accommodations, as well as assist me in navigating the complexities of the special education system. Uh, for the last 15 years, I've been an advocate for my kids. 
Um, and I've struggled even with a background in, in this area and can't imagine how many kids fall through the cracks because parents don't know what they don't know. Um, two weeks ago, I actually attended the CPAC meeting um, where I met some amazing educators, some parents, school leaders, and the new special edu education director, Chris, um, which was like an awesome experience and I wish I went sooner. Um, this meeting allowed all to speak freely in safe space and they could compare their experiences, their needs, um, and, and kind of like what roadblocks they run into. Uh, kids are not a one size fits all. And as a parent or a guardian, you don't need to do this alone. So I think that that's an area that I could really help with and, and spread awareness. Um, as a school committee board member, I would advocate for the students in our community just as like if they were my own. I think that's probably the most important part of your job. Um, and along with spreading the awareness in the community, I would also um, you know, help with making sure that the, you know, they know resources and assistance. And the CPAC, like, I, I saw it a couple times at Whitman Day, but I think it just needs more, um, more um, visibility through the school systems because it's really, really amazing. Um, so my love for lifelong learning has guided me to obtain yet another master's. Um, and love it or hate it, we all need to embrace technology because it's not going anywhere. Uh, technology in the classroom and the world will continue to be an intricate part of life, education, and how we connect now and definitely in the future. Uh, closing the digital divide is definitely challenging, but it's not impossible. And uh, technology and education actually is, a, you know, and I did read through like um, some of the uh, policies that you already have in place, and I was really happy to see that, you know, embracing technology. But it provides... Um, a, an experience where it's interactive, it's engaging. Um, you can tailor the learning to an individual skill set of a, a child, because like I said, one size doesn't fit all and kids. Uh, technology facilitates collaboration among the students and the educators. I mean, I can see my kids' grades immediately, which, which is very helpful. I wish they had that when my older kids went to school. Uh, that way we wouldn't have to go to night school. Um, technology is definitely a game changer for educators, um, and it offers access to high quality learning experiences uh, and creates new ways of teaching. So it's, you know, teachers are going to have new ways and kids are going to be engaged. They're not going to be bored and reading a book or doing worksheets. Uh, there's a lot of challenges when it comes to implementation, the use or emerging advancements and technologies. It's like changing every day. Uh, you know, artificial intelligence is is, you know, my phone's probably going to give me a speech later on this. Um, but the use of immersive technology like virtual reality, artificial intelligence definitely creates an educational uh, possibilities that promote learning and creates an experience at a whole other level. And, you know, Whitman Hansen, these kids deserve to, to have these needs, you know, have these experiences at, at their hands. And as part of the school committee, I would be able to collaborate with educators, the IT team, community, and create a path forward to embrace technological growth and adopt a vision to integrate technology into the schools um, safely. Um, there are so many grants and opportunities available. Um, I, I like doing research. Um, that's one of the things I really like doing. I uh, don't know why, but I like, to, I like to know a little bit about everything. Um, schools are already behind when it comes uh, to technology. And with my expertise, I, I would hope that I could help um, spread that and help uh, kind of bridge that gap. One minute. Okay. okay. Ooh, we'll skip to the good stuff. So most importantly, I like to work diligently and effectively with other board members, um, finance committee, the superintendent, and others to ensure that budgets approved being allocated appropriately while maintaining transparency. Um, and you know, I, I do ask that you consider me, Amory Odell. Uh, to fill one of the two vacancies for the Whitman School Committee. And if selected, I'll embody transparency, advocate for the best of our students, the community, um, as well as be an exemplified leader, embrace uh, the goals, communicate effectively, positively, representing uh, Whitman and Hanson, uh, work as a team, ensure the development and refinement of the policies, adopt a fiscally sound budget, focus on what is best for all students, create an environment welcoming to all and promote policies that reflect the best interests of the students in a positive future for Whitman and Hanson kids. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Anne-Marie. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And I didn't talk that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I practice talking slow. <laughs> They fall down very well at being on time. 
I just have to get water. Would you like something? Would you, if like you don't mind, Mar? Would you give me Absolutely. one? Thank you. Okay, well, I don't want to sit down. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You, I would make, I would have made a special trip. Oh no, we just ran out of water. How did that happen? Oh geez. Thank you. Thank you. Angel. I'm not. <laughs> so um, I'm not a Charles. So Chuck did not show up. No, I just tried again. No. No. Okay. And and neither did um, Heather. She did not either. No, I when I called her name. Okay. Okay. Just trying to make sure. This is Ginger Sullivan. Yes. Okay. Hi. I didn't realize there were so many people in here. <laughs> so, it's a well, secret. There's, there's uh, four of us a school committee, five a select board. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's good. Those old people. Those old people. Okay. 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 Every other is selectmen, I think. Yes. Okay. Starting from Both just either, either side. Either, either side. side. Yeah. Okay, you may begin. All when right. You're ready. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Ginger Sullivan. Uh, just to give you a little bit about who I am, I know you have my resume. So um, just quickly, I let's see. I am a mother of one, a sassy little nine-year-old. Um, I was born in California, but happily raised in Whitman. Um, my Whitman pride sort of runs deep. I was, you know, a graduate of the Whitman school systems. I was around when uh, there were four elementary schools schools with Conley and Park Ave and Holt, um, Regal. I remember Safflers and Toll House and all of that, so the history goes back quite a ways. Um, I participated with Whitman Youth Soccer, Girl Scouts, I remember the Whitman Middle Haunted House, all of that. Um, and so, you know, my, I have quite a history of, with Whitman um, and in addition, uh, now that I have a young daughter, um, I certainly have a connection back to the school system, which is sort of my motivation to uh, resume uh, my my commitment and investment. Um, you, you when, so you, you see my resume and you have a sense of what I do um, professionally, um, but just to sort of highlight some of that experience and how um, it might uh, you know, apply to the role here. Uh, in responding to the question of what am I going to bring to the school and um, the students during my time in the office, um, I have a strong foundation of education and disability law uh, related to what I do for work. Uh, I have uh, uh, developed an ana analytical skills and critical thinking based on what I do uh, between my education and my work. I do day in and day out. I have familiarity with state budgeting systems, the Operational Service Division, and Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, which would uh, probably uh, minimize my learning curve in some of the aspects that we do with our municipality. I have a commitment to lifelong learning, a passion for advocacy, and serving our community. I have an understanding of the importance of fostering an inclusive and supportive learning environment that nurtures the growth and the development of all of our students, meeting them where they're at, encouraging their access to all of our education. I have an ability to work closely with all the groups of people. I understand that there's an importance to have varied perspectives. I understand the need to compromise, understanding that each, of, each committee member has different perspectives and that together we can make informed decisions that will positively impact our schools. I have a humble and curious nature. I seek to learn about what I don't know or haven't lived through shared experiences. I engage in productive conversations and discussions openly, and I hope to work through differences in a swift way, meet, meeting consensus, and I have a humble inquiry. So those are my words. Um, but also, I think more importantly sometimes, uh, taking a different approach, I also decided I would ask others what they thought I might bring to the position. So I asked my friends and neighbors, um, and I said, what do you think I could bring to the school, and posed the same question to them. 
and they said uh, enthusiasm, compassion, helpfulness, devotion to your people and your purpose, responsibility, and availability. You're a person that sees things through. I also asked the people I work with. They said you're a fierce advocate for the equity and access. You're fair and you have clarity on your goals and the goals that are shared by our mission. You're someone who sets high standards but holds higher ones for yourself. You're sophisticated at problem solving and brainstorming solutions. And finally, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the organization I work for, but I work for Cardinal Cushing Centers. And we are um, an organization that provides services to um, students and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And we've been around since 1947. So it's quite a history. And I've been with them for uh, seven years. And uh, so I asked them, I asked my students and my adults that I partner with and I support day in and day out. And it's really their opinion that mattered the most to me. So, but these are their words. Uh, Ginger, you're a friend and you treat us like a friend. You are respectful and you don't forget about us. You find us new friends, new jobs, partners, and new experiences. Ginger, you are a voice when we are not given the chance to have one. And so it's their words that resonate deepest with me. And so if I were to ask that question, what would I bring? It's all of those things that I'd bring to you guys. So. Um, in closing, I, I know you guys have a lot of candidates. You had quite a robust response. I, um, I appreciate the time and commitment you guys give in your varied roles to our community. So I respect you and trust you will make the best decision for our community. Um, and if that doesn't include me as your selection, that is quite all right. I respect that. Um, and I will continue to be invested and I will validate my trust by paying attention to the meetings, and uh, consider running in the future if I, if I have any challenge. So, that's it. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank you. Much. I'm good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty imposing, all of you here. <laughs> so, I feel like I'm. Good. How are you guys doing? I feel like I'm at the. Ryan Trestle. Yes, the uh, House on Un-American Committees. I, you know. Um, so at first I was, Yeah, I know. Um, so I just want to thank everybody first of all um, from the school board and the school committee and you know the town administrator and also the Whitman Hanson Community Access are coming out on a Tuesday night. I imagine. Um, sitting and listening to speech after speech is probably not your preferred Tuesday night activity, so I appreciate it because I know it's an important part of the process. Um, I know the question before the applicants is, um, what are you going to bring to the Whitman Hanson uh, School Committee? Um, and I think what I would bring probably is best summed up by just a myriad of perspectives. Um, as I mentioned in my letter, um, my son was diagnosed when he was three with autism spectrum disorder. Um, and when he was diagnosed, the developmental pediatrician kind of cautioned us and warned us that, um, you know, to prepare ourselves that he might never speak. Um, and that was kind of where the prognosis was. Um, and then the next day we brought him to start uh, preschool at the McQuan. Um, and thanks to the teachers and the paraprofessionals, the speech therapists, behavioral specialists, and the occupational therapists, you know, now, I put him on the van in the morning. He's now going to—he's going to be 13 this year. I put him on the van every morning, and he, you know, he, I buckle him in, and he tells me to have a good day. And every night, I, um, you know, I tuck him in, and he tells us he loves us, and he'll see us tomorrow, and he can say my name and my wife's name, and um, and he says his sister's name very loud every day outside the colony when we go to pick her up, um, and he's getting agitated that she's not coming out and fast enough. Um, but it's a, in some ways it's a miracle, and it's because of the staff and the students of the Whitman Hanson School District that they attended. So the perspective I bring there is I know what schools can do, and I know what they can do. Um, and it's sometimes it can be amazing. Um, also for the last 20 years, as, as in my resume, I've been a, worked as a private tutor. Um, and every night 
including tonight after this meeting is over, unfortunately, I have to go, I meet with students and I help them with their, tonight I'm going to be doing dimensional analysis for chemistry, because uh, I got a panic call this afternoon, um, or calculus, or AP, APUS, DBQs, or helping them write a college essay, um, and I do that every night. Um, and I've done that for the last 20 something years. But the other part of it that people probably don't envision when they hear that I'm a tutor is that after the kid gets up, the mom walks into the kitchen, the dad walks into the kitchen and they have concerns, they have issues with the school, with the teachers, with the, the, the atmosphere at the, their kid's school, with the curriculum, they have these issues and I have to talk to them about it. So the other perspective is that I know that as fortunate as my wife and I have been and my family has been with how great the schools have been to our children, that's not the experience of every family. And I hear about that every every night. And obviously I work with kids outside Women Hanson, but I also work with families in Women Hanson district and I, I hear about that as well. So that's a perspective. Before I was a tutor and before I left to be um, a stay at home dad with my kid, I worked in schools. And there were times where April would come around and I would get a little pink slip and then I'd get a call in July and I'd say that the, that the position has been reinstated. And fortunately, at the time, I was young, and I didn't have a lot of responsibilities. I was in my you know, early to mid-20s. Um, but it was still stressful, not knowing what I was going to be doing in September. Um, also, for the last 20 years, I've worked for the PCC program, which is a summer program that runs out of Stonehill College. Um, and for the last seven of those, I've been teaching for 20 years. For the last seven, I've worked as an administrator for them. And while I don't, the budget is clearly above my pay grade. Um, I've consulted with the director about the budget and the, sometimes the difficult cuts we have to make. And I've definitely hired teachers to teach for me in the summer. Um, and they do a great job, and I tell them they do a great job, I give them a good evaluation, and then the following spring I'm looking at enrollment numbers and I have to call them and tell them I no longer have a position for them. So the budget is obviously the largest remit that the school committee has. Um, and we, 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 you know, I watch your meetings and I hear, you know, I look at the documents when they're online and those are numbers on spreadsheets, but they're also people. And I've been a person on both sides of those cuts. So that's a perspective that I can bring to that as to the school committee as well. Bless you. Um, additionally, you know, I, as I said, I left working at school so I could be a stay at home dad to my, my kids. My son, Jamie was born. 13 years ago, and the thought was my wife works at Stonehill. Um, that was a job we didn't want to give up for the tuition remission possibilities. I got tuition remission as a student because my dad was a college professor and I knew how valuable that was. So I told my wife that she was not giving up the job and that I would I would take a few years off and I would I would stay at home and you know I could do the tutoring at night and we would make things work. And I, the plan was to do that for maybe five or six years until my kids were school, both my kids were school aged. Um, and with Jamie's diagnosis, that became impossible. And I'm going to be home with him for the rest of my life. Um, he's, you know, one of us has to be home with him at all times. And what that has meant is that it, that is, you know, my wife works during the day. I go to work at night, but I'm not working full time. So our family has definitely struggled financially because of that over the last 10 years. I mean, we've there have been times where my wife and I have had to share one car for long periods of time, trading it back and forth because we can't afford to fix the other one or get a new one. Um, we've definitely paid bills late. Um, I, we've, you know, I've definitely kept the thermostat really low when the spring is being pretty stubborn and starting because we can't afford another oil delivery. So when the people in this town talk about the impact of the school budgets on their own family budgets, it's something that I do take seriously because it's something that I experience myself. It's like I, I it's super valuable that, that, you know, and these are very important things that need to be paid for. And, and but they're also when fam, when people get up at town meeting or people get up in different, you know, places in town and they talk about the strain that these things put on their family's budgets, it's something that I can understand and sympathize with. So that is also a perspective that I can bring to the school committee. And all these different perspectives, I think, come together. And I, I, I try to think about because obviously when these these votes come up and these discussions come up, you know, there are people and there are families in this town that are childless. There are families in this town that are older that no longer have kids in the school system. And the idea is, well, what do we say to them about the importance of the schools? Because I don't know that they always, you know, see it. I know that there's there's obviously, you know, you can make the argument about, you know, places that have good school systems have better property, higher property values, and it's good for your property value. But I feel like there's a more direct benefit to a, to a school system in a community, and that is 
There's a sociologist who wrote a book, um, Robert Putnam, called Bowling Alone. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it or read of it, but his he talks about the idea of third places, the idea that that you have home and you have work, and then there's, there used to be a lot of third places where people would get together. They, you know, bowling leagues. Obviously, that's where the name of the book comes from. Bowling leagues or church choirs, or you know, you talk about like the you know the Elks Club. These places where people get together, and those have been declining for generations in this country. And it it explains in some ways some of the division that we we have in this country because it's really hard to hate people if you bowl with them or you play softball with them or you sing in the choir with them unless they're really pitchy I suppose right but I think that the idea is that that social capital we you know we're losing that as a country and the last the first and really sometimes maybe the last big place that that happens is is the school systems we bring all of our kids together in a school, and yeah, they learn how to read, and they learn how to write, they learn arithmetic, but also they learn how to work together, they learn how to respect each other, they learn how to cohabitate, they learn how to value each other, and I think that that is where schools become a community asset, because schools make our citizens, and I think that's so important, and it's so um, undervalued as what what schools do, right? And that schools are not just something for the families that have school-aged children. They are a community asset that is a community good for all members of the community. Um, the other day, um, I was driving with my daughter Margaret through the center of town, and she said, we should rename Whitman Nice Town. I'm going to say, first of all, if um, for the town administrator, it's like, don't do that. It's not a good name for a town. Um, and I, but I asked her why, and she said, well, everyone here is so nice, and that's why we should call it Nice Town. And I thought, I'm like, that's, that's a really sweet thought. And it's nice to to kind of think of that. But if we aspire to that, the way that we do that, the way that we make a kind community, the way that we make a kind of school is by supporting our schools. Because... You have one minute, right? Okay. My, my son, I pick my son up every day from the middle school, and he is a fairly nonverbal, you know, he does speak, but fairly nonverbal kid. He, he still wears diapers. And every day, there are all these tall, gangly middle school boys and girls with braces who come up to him, and they give him high fives, and they, t they say hi to him, Jamie. And I think if we could just keep that, foster that, nurture that, because that's the, the schools do that but through athletics, through arts, through music, through gay straight alliances, through big best buddies, through robotics teams, all these different things that the schools provide make great citizens. And that's, I think, what a value that I would bring to the, the, the school is emphasizing that the social emotional, emotional learning the schools are doing, all of these things that help make a good citizenry, because that's what schools do and what schools provide. Uh, I know you guys have had a long night, and I know you have a tough decision uh, to make, so I just want to thank you guys for taking the time to do all this tonight. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very all much, right. Ron. Thank you. And may I just say one thing? My daughter went to um, the middle school, and I had the pleasure to see you and your son every day. Oh. God bless you. Oh, thank you very much. You're an amazing father. Oh, th thank you very much. All right. Anybody else? Any other compliments before I go? <laughs> Any other? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And now we have, last but not least, Danielle Wynn. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Great. Um, I'm going to start with, a, on a personal note, what my um, personal reasons are for applying for this position. So uh, third generation, grew up in Whitman. Uh, myself, my mother, my grandmother. Um, I attended Conley Elementary School, Whitman Middle School, um, and was a 1993 graduate of Whitman Hanson. Uh, I was able to be a part of many program, uh, program opportunities um, throughout my years. Uh, the academically talented uh, program that was offered through the elementary and middle schools, uh, the AP programming that was offered in the high school, uh, which I think really gave me a leg up in my professional career after that. Um, my husband and I then chose to raise our family here in Whitman. 
Um, one of the reasons being um, is our faith in the school system. Um, we've been involved with the community in multiple ways over the years, um, including involvement with the Boy Scout programs, the Girl Scout programs. Uh, my husband uh, is a Air Force reservist. He's currently retired, in the process of retiring from that position, so the timing was really right um, for me to work with the community in a different way. Um, professionally, I have um, over 30 years educational experience um, that I feel I can bring to this committee. I began my journey as an educator, as a preschool assistant teacher, teacher, lead teacher, and then director at a nonprofit agency, the Kennedy Donovan Center. Um, I started in Hanson and then worked at the Brockton location. Uh, that gave me my first experience working with some components of billing, um, budgeting, and also working collaboratively with the wraparound services within both the communities of Hanson and um, Brockton. Um, I had the opportunities at that point in time to really start working collaboratively with the Brockton Public Schools um, and their early childhood specialists to identify children who might be in need of services um, and realized at that time that my heart really lay with the work of the public school system. So I then transitioned over to the Brockton Public Schools and began my work um, as a grade four inclusion teacher. Um, in Brockton, what that means is that we are, uh, that position, you are a duly certified teacher. You are responsible for the education of our general education students and special education students. So I was able to gain a wealth of experience working with both general education students and programming and our special education programming. Um, loved that, that position, uh, worked that position for many years. Um, responsibilities included everything, obviously, that, that, teachers do, which is everything, um, planning and scheduling for all subject areas, again, direct instruction of both special education um, and regular uh, education students, modification and differentiation of tasks, administration of state testing and compliance, participation at team meetings, development of student goals and objectives, um, obviously maintaining and promoting parent communication, as well as um, supervising the support staff that were involved in those programs. Um, after quite a few years in that role, um, felt there was time for a change and I moved on to become a team facilitator, which um, in Brockton means that you are really responsible for the IEP compliance for the schools for which you oversee. Um, I did programming from K to 12 as a, a team a facilitator, so writing individualized education plans for students from kindergarten through high school. Um, Again, everything from reviewing um, initial evaluations, completing case reviews with special education department heads and directors, and ensure, really ensuring district um, IEP compliance. Uh, that obviously meant that we needed, uh, in that role, to have a really extensive knowledge of the team meeting process, all federal and state uh, education mandates and regulations, the curriculum frameworks and standards, um, and just possessing the leadership skills to really facilitate and run that team it was a quite an interesting role because you um, oversee the entire table, but you supervise no one. So being able to really, you know, develop rapport quickly um, with not just the parents but everybody at the table was really critical. Um, as you, you know, had to make hard decisions in the moment, um, but we're really kind of out there on your own. Um, from there, I went on to apply for administrative role. So I was a department head for a few years, again, overseeing programs K to 12, including our alternative high school, um, reporting to the director of special education, supervising special education teachers and the team chairs. Um, responsibilities included overseeing all phases of services provided by the special education department, um, serving as a resource to school personnel, providing leadership and vision to ensure um, continuous program involvement. Um, Brockton is unique in that we offer quite a variety of services um, within our own community. Um, that involved working collaboratively with you know, principals at all levels of administration, teachers, support staff, families in the community. Um, implementing conflict resolution skills in a variety of situations and evaluating teachers as well. Um, from there, I applied for a position as uh, assistant director when we had um, kind of a shift in our models in Brockton. And I currently am the assistant director that oversees our seven middle schools in Brockton, all the special ed programming. Um, again, critical 
um, in maintaining uh, conformance to district state uh, federal laws, uh, reporting to the Associate Director of Exceptional Learning, who oversees other programs outside of special education, um, supervising the program coordinators, team chair persons, and special education teachers, um, engaging in areas of our inclusion action plan to make sure we're facilitating inclusion opportunities for our students with disabilities, maintaining regular communication with building principals. So I meet um, regularly bi-weekly with every um, middle school principal to ensure um, that we are providing them the support they need to make sure that our students with disabilities have access to the program that they need, um, developing new programs um, when the time is right as well, um, including budgeting, needs-based budgeting, data-informed department budgeting, being able to um, identify when specific services are needed um, and being able to put that, that forth as appropriate uh, budgetary line item. Um, over the, the years with, we all know what streets we have been in with our um, trying to find Qualified teachers, we know, has been been a challenge. Um, so, working with having compensatory um, uh, services built in as a line item, because we were obviously hit by you know a surprise for some of the services um, that we had needed post COVID to implement, um, with lack of of staff and teaching shortages. So, working with the department to have a compensatory line item, so that we're ensuring that we're able to provide students the services that they are owed. Um, Outside of that role, I've served on a variety of committees, um, our PBIS, our MTSS, um, falling under that umbrella now, um, providing positive behavioral interventions and supports with a focus on that social emotional learning, which is so critical for our students. Um, currently serving on a committee for the new IEP improvement project, uh, committees to select a core ELA curriculum um, that we did three years ago for our elementary. Students, um, middle school literacy committees, um, working with the seven middle schools with curriculum development, um, currently on a strategic group with our bilingual department to increase collaboration between the bilingual and the special education departments in the city, um, and just part of general citywide strategic planning, uh, being a part of developing district instructional priorities and school improvement planning for each one of our individual schools. Um, and I guess in closing, what, what can I bring to the school committee? I feel like my experience as a public school educator um, and administrator with almost 30 years experience from pre-K to 12, my experiences as a student in the district, and um, perhaps most importantly, my experience as a parent in the district as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Wait till she shuts, comes in and shuts the door. Wait till she comes back yeah. and shuts the door. I did a final check. No way. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we have um, quite a difficult decision, I think. Yeah. We had some great people um, tonight. So who did you do? They didn't show, so we don't. Heather, Kevin Mayer, and Chuck Slavin. Okay. So both of them are. Yeah, we're done. So we have nine people. We're nine people. So I think we heard some, you know, we have a difficult decision there. You know, this is difficult. I had to sit in that chair before, before we vote, and it's very difficult what they had to do. But um, I think we learned so much more about them than you do in a regular election. Can we call them in now? I mean, we're still... No, they can, they, um, can come in if they want. I, it's, it's up to them. Oh, okay. if, it's up to them. They don't have to. Um, it's, uh, if you, you can go tell them if they want to come in to hear it's who a, gets yeah, it, but if they're asking questions, it's just going to be... No, they're not, we're not going to ask questions. We're just going around with a vote, but... I it's just, no, but we're not no, doing that. We're not doing that. I think they have the ability to hear if we're having... We're not going to have a discussion. We're just saying the name who we're voting. We're not discussing anything. We don't. Mm -mm. It's like going into a ballot box. Are you pretending you're going to a ballot box? Who are you going to vote for? That's what we're going to do. And because when you say a name, 
you have confidence in that person that you are. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys, you know, it was up to you if you wanted to come in or not, and um, it's going to be a vote, that's all, um, um, because of time limitations, et cetera, um, that we do this. Uh, you know, and I know some people would love to, you know, have more explanations and more questions, but I said we got more information actually than usually you do at the ballot when just having it here. So, so we're going to go around and you're going to give me one name, okay, and mark it on the sheet who you have nominated. Oh, or not everybody's in nomination. Do we need to? Do I need to put that in nomination? No, yeah, all all the names are nominated. all the names are in nomination. So, whoever, if the I'll, I'll first, move that we nominate all the people. Okay, yes. I, I second I it. As well. I, I second I it. Well. I second it. All in favor. All, all in favor. Excellent. Excellent. It is. I know. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much, guys. Yes. You have made it. Awful. <laughs> Just want to say, in my opinion, for me, anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, Justin, do you want to? Sure. I have scoring rubrics. I'm sure of my scores. Uh, Christy Oriak. Justin. Dawn. I don't know. I need to clarify a question. We are voting for which seat on the school committee. Well, no. does it, tech, it doesn't really matter no. now. Okay. Technically, we have technical appointments of through May. Yes. Election. Yes. Election. And, right. that, and then at that yeah. election, they choose which one they want to run for if they choose to run again. If they even do, right. That was just a point of order. Just a point of order. If they're running again on the ballot, the first person listed. They would technically have that seat. It'd be the first person listed mm -hmm. about. So if they choose that, but they could choose to be a three-year. So and then they would see, be the first. This yeah. is where it does matter. So say somebody who said, "I can give a year," might want to run for that year. Yeah. You know. So maybe it's this. This is what would matter. Well, we, she uh, council told us to do each one first. So that's this is Fred's position. Thank you. All right. Do you have somebody, Don? Okay. Stephanie Blackman. Okay. Dan? Uh, Chris Marks. Steve? Stephanie Blackman. Sean? Anyone? Okay, Rosemary. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna call me, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> I Stephanie Blackman, resume wise. Okay, Laura. Chris Max. Oh, God, me. It's up to you. I don't know. <laughs> Can I have four? <laughs> <laughs> Want to put them in a hat? This is yeah, seriously, right. seriously. Um, I'm going to say Christopher Marks. Pardon? Christopher Marks. And you? Okay, uh, Ryan Dressel. Okay. We have three and three. Sean, you two and two. No. Sean. You voted for Daniel Wynn. Daniel Wynn. Do we take the top two and go around and only vote yep. those two? Yes, that's what the plan. Yep. Okay, so Stephanie, uh, Chris. No, this is for Fred's position. Okay, so Ju Justin. So yeah, between those two, Stephanie Blackman. Stephanie Blackman. And 
Dan? I know. Okay. It's so because our staff being back on it. Chris Marks. Chris Black. Chris Black, say that. No, say that. <laughs> Why would I? Yeah. Okay. Stephanie Black. Okay. Stephanie Black. Okay. Stephanie Black. Okay. Chris Marks. Okay. I'm going to say Chris Marks. Stephanie Black. Okay. Stephanie, yeah. you want to see. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mike, if you want to take her out to do that um, while we go to the next round. <laughs> and we don't have to keep you too late. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right, so now we're voting on um, David's position, okay? Even though both positions expire in May, so. Justin. Chris Doria. Okay. Dawn, what you thinking? <laughs> Sorry, I know. I know. Yeah, I'm in our hand, okay. Dan? Chris Marks. Steve? Chris Marks. Sean? In your one. Rosemary? Yeah, I know. Going. Yeah. I, I do. And we're telling all these people they need to run again in the spring, except <laughs> Dawn and I don't yes. want you to run, though. <laughs> Everyone should. Every, run. They all should run yes, with these things. Them, yes. I'm going to go with Nicholas Beamer. Okay. Laura? Well, <laughs> it's hard because uh -huh. I was going to pick Ryan Pressel. For the second one, but I had picked Chris Marks, so obviously in my feelings, I will have to stay with Chris Marks. Okay. Uh, I go with um, Chris Diorio. Carl. I'm going to go with Ryan Trussell again. Okay. All right. So. We have um, Chris with two, Chris Marks to the two Chris's. Does everybody have that? Yep. Yeah. To the two Got Chris's. It. Chris Diorio and Chris Marks. Right. Okay. So now you're going to choose one of those. Right. They had the top votes. That's how we do this. Got it. Okay. Diorio. Chris Marks. Chris Marks. Chris Marks. Oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Jesus, you guys. Okay, Dan, you said Chris Marks? Yes. Chris Marks. Okay. All right, well, that's five, so. Chris Marks on. That's four. That's only four. Oh, four. Oh, sorry. It's only four. Who? I said Chris Marks. And you said five. Okay. Okay. I, everyone knows. I, it's amazing. This was very difficult. Yes. You have to first. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris Marks. I'm sorry. Chris Marks. Uh, no, sorry, Chris Diorio. I was going to yeah, stay with Chris. Yeah, and I'll vote for Chris Diorio also. Okay, so it was 5 4. So Chris Marks is the new. So, Chris, congratulations. So, the, I hope that everybody thinks about it, watches, comes to our meetings. We appreciate an audience when we have school committee meetings. Uh, we appreciate input. Uh, we always like input, um, you know, and um, stay with it and don't get discouraged. Okay? And try again. We thank you very much uh, for your participation tonight.
if we were allowed, I could have picked everyone to use uh, a motion to uh, motion to adjourn. Second, All in favor? Aye. Everybody.